I'm Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. And you're listening to the Fusion Children's Ministry Blogcast. Did we change the name one day? <laughs> I think Blogcast. Podcast. Yeah, that's podcast. Vlog. Welcome. I like Blogcast. Well, okay. Today, it's the Blogcast. And we're talking about... With Ashley Best. The only She's Ashley right Best. there. We're talking about something very important today, Stephen. It's something that... Because I went to school, I got getting taught ahead how of to yourself. be... getting What? What do Today's you mean? episode, as always, is not sponsored by Vans. They're off the wall. And by off the wall, we mean off the table. That's right. All right. Now, can you tell us what we're talking about today? No, I I'm can't. I'm ready. I can't because I it's have to tell you something. It's a little bit different vibe today. I know. I like it, though. It's yeah, dramatic. It is. It is very dramatic. It's a little intense. You got something awesome for us? Yes. Before Good. I do, I had something kind of prime the something awesome, and that is a book I'm reading. The book is not the can something awesome. you just awesome. plug Amazon as well? Did I you will... just prime Amazon Prime? The book is the prelude to the something awesome, okay. so I have to follow the flow. All and right. the book is called Deep Work. Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. So it's very interesting. We all know we're super distracted. Our phones are a distraction. Work is hard, things like this. Um, but the book talks about how... Speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> I'm super distracted. <laughs> okay. It talks about the concept of how do you get your best work done and just the importance of kind of mm. cutting yourself off to focus on something mm. with like real intensity. Okay. It's been very convicting for me because... You know, part of my job, like many of you guys, you feel like you have to be accessible all the time to whomever, whether families in the church. We love you guys, everyone watching this video, <laughs> by the way. But when you're being constantly interrupted, you're, it's hard to get anything done. Yes. And the book kind of addresses that in a new way. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's, it's been a great read. I'm not Deep done with it yet. work. But it did remind me of something awesome. Which you can buy on Amazon, and they will prime ship it to you. This episode is awesome, not sponsored by Amazon. Not found on Amazon, the desk chair hoodie. Check this out here. It's a hoodie that, I, are you wearing this or is your desk chair wearing this? What would you say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope no one, would, no one's chair no one's or wearing. person will ever wear this. So as you can see, you put this little thing on your chair and it provides you with a hood that you can flip over your head for some privacy and some focus time. So whether it looks like you're on your phone, your iPad or whatever, you kind of get locked in your own little bubble there and it's your own little way to kind of get away while not getting like away. I feel like Greg Stern would come up right behind you and just scare you while you were wearing this thing just to see if you were actually working that, or anything because really your entire peripherals are gone. You're just, you're really setting yourself up to having a really awful day of people messing with you, you more, yeah, I think. I think you're but, right. I mean, someone came up with it, and it's pretty cool. Hey, if you guys buy the desk chair hoodie and wear it at a Starbucks and take a picture of yourself, a selfie, and send it to Ashley, the best admin and best friend ever, we will put you, um, we'll drop you guys in the next podcast. Done. Uh, Steven, have you ever had to hire somebody before? Yes, I have had to hire somebody before. Was Several it? Several somebodies. And were you awesome at it from the beginning? Or would you, I mean, was so it hard? Good. <laughs> so, so good. So good. I think hiring people is something I was never really trained to do. Because I did ministry nope. stuff. I did internship stuff. Nope. And, you know, you learn how to, you know, preach. You learn how to teach, lead mm -hmm. volunteers. But when it yeah. came to actually hiring someone. Someone that, comes by and says, hey, you need to uh, go find someone to do this job. Good luck. Thanks. Any other directions that I got for that? <laughs> nope, nope. Don't screw up. Just do what you know you do when you yeah, hire someone. Do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just do what what they do when they hire somebody. Uh, I've had to hire people. Uh, had I've got the opportunity to hire people before, and the privilege. The privilege. It's nerve wracking, it you is. know. And you think, man, I have this budget. It doesn't pay as much as I'd like it to. I have to write a job description. We have to receive applications. Did you we have hire to do Ashley? Interviews. Yeah, we hired Ashley. That was a no-brainer, though. You did a good job on that one. Well, when you have that the, was a good one. When you have the best, it's easy. You know, <laughs> she she is the best. But yes. I've not always had the best. And it makes it more difficult when you have to figure out how happens. to hire who you're trying to hire. Yeah, true. So I don't know, what, is, what are some things that you found are helpful of hiring like an assistant, children's pastor, early childhood person, or uh, whatever you've been responsible well, for? Well, number one, they have to love Jesus. Okay. That's, that's a no-brainer. Second one, though, is does it look like five years from now this person is going to be Integrated and assimilated into the culture of 
where we're going? Does okay. it look like this person is going to, you know, are they going to make it? Is that, do they work? Do they have the, you know, the attitude, the look and everything? Or maybe they have some of the stuff, but you just go, uh, five years from now, we're going to be doing, this is where we want to be, and I don't see that person being here. with you got yeah. You got to ask those kinds of questions, because as bad as it is to just fill in a warm body volunteering, yeah. filling in a warm body on a staffing job is a nightmare yeah. that you are just opening yourself up to because then you might have to fire them or you know all sorts of stuff if it's not the right fit. Right. Yeah. What, uh, okay, you said five years. Why did the number five pop into your head? Uh, Craig Rochelle runs everything off of five-year plans. And <laughs> if Craig does it, you're good, right? He's running a pretty successful church. So, yeah, you know. okay. So five-year kind of plan, and what would be an interview? Would you figure that in an interview, or would you no, ask questions in the No, you know, a lot of people don't. Five years scares people when you go, well, can you commit to five years? Right. They go, um, I don't even know if I like you yet. So, right. But in my head, I have a vision of where I want to see my ministry going. And so I'm looking at this person and saying, can they come with me along on this vision? Is this something that they can do? And in five years, are they still going to be a part of it and, and, and different stuff? And so that's, that's what I'm looking for in, in long haul. They might not make it, you know, different things. They might move. Tons of different stuff, but could they potentially be here five years and working and being a part and integrated totally in the ministry? Because, you know, it takes two years, two years. They did a study on this. It takes two years of being anywhere before you even understand the culture of where it is you're working. Yeah. So you got two years of working with someone before they're even going to understand what's going on. Yeah. Crazy. That makes sense. Crazy. Do so you if you're are... hiring like for a one year thing, it's I don't believe in just, that. Just forget I it. I don't believe in it. Yeah. What um, uh, how do? What are some red flags for you? Well, you'll know this. This just isn't going to work. Mm. That may be specific to your culture, but what do you see right off the bat that you know this isn't going to be a fit? Are they a Generation Z or no? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're 12. You're not going to make. <laughs> yeah. you make the cut. Um, I think attitude is the biggest thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just do they have a heart? For, for Jesus and for and for me, you know, for reaching kids and, and for ministry. Ministry is a hard, we all know, is a hard job and people don't understand right. everything that goes into it. We don't just work on Sundays. Right. It's 24 seven, we're always available, you know, to people. And when we hire somebody, if we're bringing them on the team, they also have to be available and learn those kinds of things and what's going on with all that kind of stuff. So. Right. Yeah. And I've interviewed people before who are just looking for a job. And maybe some other place you can get away with that, but ministry, it Not takes ministry. so much. So much. And it, from like a job, like vocational perspective, especially the types of jobs that we would probably be yeah. able to offer, they don't pay a ton. No. So you really have to. We don't do this for the money. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got to find people that are going to be able to work really hard for what is probably yeah. little pay. Yeah. And if you're just looking for a, a job, that you will be dissatisfied with ministry really quick. Yeah. It's not a great just job. Yeah, it's that it's that thing where if they're not they're not bought into what ministry is all about and why there's only so many times someone can fall on their sword doing something that they don't like before they're going to kill themselves. Yeah. You're going to they're going to burn out. You're going to be frustrated because you got this burnt out staff member who is not helping, who is not intentionally, but almost can be sabotaging to everything that's going on because they're not living up to or doing what they should be doing. And now you're doing two jobs and you got this dead weight almost that right. it's awkward that you got to deal with. Yeah. And that's probably my big thing. When you're interviewing or when you're hiring staff, you got to have a very clear sense of what your expectations yes. for that person are. Yeah. Sometimes we know that we have a need, but we don't put the work in ahead of time yeah. to figure out and quantify exactly yeah. what that need is. And you yeah. think, we'll just get the right person on board and they'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, they won't just figure it out. No. Chances are. No. And they'll be frustrated with you yes. because you're frustrated with them, but they don't know why and you yeah. haven't really clearly right. communicated yeah. why. Yeah. So, You're just here to support me. Well, what does that mean? Well, just go out there and do ministry. Well, what does that mean? What do you mean, what does that mean? Yeah. I know what that means. Why don't you know what that yeah. means? It's funny. So Ashley and I, we've actually, we joke about Ashley. She is awesome. 
but I she's had, the best. She is the best. Yeah. I had created, I don't know if it was a job description or set of expectations, but here's some things that I need help with. Oh. But we've actually revisited that list and we've actually said, is this, is what I'm asking you to do still in alignment with this? Do we need to change this? Are our expectations meeting each other? And while we could always do a better job with that, it's something I think about often, and Ashley has a permission to tell me like, hey, this is off, or yeah. this is not quite, this is too much, or the, we need, I, you know, I should may, be maybe doing more here instead of there. You know, we try to have that open feedback loop so that the job is kind of evolving as our needs evolve. That's, that's really healthy. I think the biggest thing in the hiring of someone is, is this person gonna be a team member with me, right? That's, it's a different, a little bit different of a, mental shift of what may have been done in the past, but really that's that's such a good relationship when you have, you can link arms with someone and there's open dialogue between you two. And if you're getting someone again, you have to, you're hiring for a specific job, but I think hiring someone who can handle things more than just a task list, who can lead and come back and say, hey, here's what's going on with right. this stuff, rather yeah. than just, uh, let me try and get all this done and you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. That's good. So we know some questions you ask when you're hiring someone to work with you, mm -hmm. but I was wondering, Stephen, yes. what is one of the worst jobs you have been hired for? Oh, one of the ones that I've ever done? Yeah, worst job you've had, worst job you've been hired for. Uh, well, I guess hired. I worked at an oyster bar once. Okay. Yeah, that well, was interesting. What was your what were your responsibilities at the well, oyster bar? Well, it was a lot of different responsibilities, <laughs> but um, we had to. Uh, I, I was in charge of like the people coming in, and it was again that different expectations. One day we get this call, and they said, "Hey." Um, we want all these oysters, so we have to get this stuff ready, and we've got 25 people coming in. Okay. Well, we're not like set up for 25 people or anything like that for like a party that size at this place we were working. And my boss just looks at me and goes, "Yeah, just figure it out." <laughs> <laughs> I'm being paid. This is in Oklahoma, like six dollars. They have an hour. oysters in Oklahoma. Don't ask me where they come from. <laughs> Dude, where, where <laughs> do they come like, from? They're like Gulf, Gulf oysters, and they are not the same oh, as Northwest oysters. Oh, that's not right. Yeah. But he's like, just figure it out. So I, you know, figure it out. Man, people came in for regular dinner. I, I took every table for this party, <laughs> and they were like, yep, yeah, sorry, I sent some people out the door. No, I got in big trouble for that. So that, that, I didn't like that job very much. Target, I also worked at Target. Yeah. And they have a motto there called Make It Pretty. Okay, that's literally their motto. This was my entire job, yeah. Make it pretty. My job, my job, not kidding, <laughs> was to grab things in the grocery aisle. Yeah. You grab it from the back okay. and you pull it to the front so that's visible. Right. And pretty. And pretty, yeah. so it's all in a line, all, all, all look good. Yeah. So that the night stalkers come and they just take it and they push it back into the back yeah. and restock all the shelves. So all I'm doing is pulling things to the front so the night stalkers know where things are supposed to be and then they're just taking my work and pushing it back. Wow. So every day I'd come, pull things forward and they just push it right wow. back. Wow. That was my job. Also $6 an hour, did not work there very long and said, this is awful. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think one time Bria and I, Bria had a babysitting gig while we were dating. Nanny, oh, nice. you call it, when you're an adult, you call it nannying, but it's it's babysitting. <laughs> so we were gonna watch these kids, some family friend, I forget the connection she had to this family. Yeah. Um, but they were having a big party, so we were gonna go and watch the kids. Well, she was gonna watch the kids upstairs and, uh, Bria, I think she was my girlfriend at the time, said, hey, do you mind if my uh, boyfriend just, con or maybe we were engaged. Anyways, <laughs> I had the green light to come and just hang out with her and the kids. And I thought, oh, that's great. Sketchy. Bring them along, it'll be fun. Sketchy. So we're gonna be with not just the kids, but all the kids for the whole party. So everyone mm. was bringing their kids. So we were gonna have like 15 kids upstairs. And so we brought stuff. To so we show up to watch the kids. <clears throat> and they said, oh, you know what? We accidentally double booked the babysitters. And we thought, oh, that's a bummer. We'll head, we'll head home, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I said, but we forgot to book the bartender. <laughs> now, if you know my wife, the last job on earth you could imagine her doing is maybe being a bartender, and me as well, because we don't know anything about any of these drinks. So they they have their little home bar set up, and they're like, yeah, just pour people drinks, and we're like. 
okay, we could do that, I suppose, for f five hours, six hours. I forgot how long we were there. Don Ross, stop oh, watching. So <laughs> we were there, and my favorite memory is some lady asked for a, for a glass of wine, and Bria, Bria's like, okay, so she grabs a wine bottle and a wine glass, and she starts filling it up, filling it up, filling it up, and it was like this far from the top. All the way to the top! <laughs> and then she handed it to her, and I'm watching, and I don't know if it's more, because you would typically only fill it up. I don't up, even like, know, but I know in movies, <laughs> and they never fill it to the top. So I just think that's funny. So she's, trying, no idea. so she's trying not to spill it. It's like half the bottle of wine. It was like, it wasn't a glass, it was a goblet. I would have just been like, you know what? I have no clue what I'm doing. Here's the whole bottle. Go have a good time, lady. And I think anybody who's drinking that. <laughs> and here's a straw. <laughs> After one visit to the bar, they all figured out really quick. We, neither of us had any no idea what we clue. were doing. <laughs> this is, I mean, it was hey, the best hey, and the worst. Hey, can you make this kind of drink? No, I cannot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about you tell me what's in it, and I'll yeah. try and put that so, together. That's awesome. That's probably my worst job. But nice. anyways, great. Ah, great. This is Stephen Salmon. Brent Colby. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button somewhere here. And don't forget to drop a like for Ashley Best. Boom. We'll see you guys next time.